Hello, I'm Rachel Jones for the Finance News Network. Joining me from Lake Resources is Managing Director Steve Promnitz. Steve, welcome back to FNM. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Now, just as a reminder for our viewers, could you start by giving us an introduction to the company? So Lake Resources works in the battery material supply chain. We are aiming to provide lithium into the batteries that power this mobility revolution, mainly with electric vehicles. The key difference with Lake Resources is we're using a clean technology, a known water processing method, to produce a very high purity lithium and doing that in a more responsibly sourced and sustainable way that has a major ESG benefit. Now, Steve, the lithium sector appears to be on a much better footing now. Is that a fair assessment? Absolutely. So the macro story is intact. We're seeing electric vehicles being uh, expanding around the globe um, recently with the EU with incentives. Now with the US under the Biden administration, we also saw a major uplift in the number of battery mega factories. They went from 70 to 181 just last calendar year. And now uh, November, December, we saw a slight uplift. January, a 40% spike in the spot price for lithium. So all the lithium stocks are up, including Lake Resources. And what can you tell me about the direct extraction method? So it's very simply a, a water processing method. It's actually not that complicated. We've been, the world's been using it for nearly 70 years. It's called iron exchange. Uh, what is new is that our technology partner, Lilac, has adapted it for lithium. And so what that does is there's a little bead, it's about half the size of a rice grain. It actually bonds onto the lithium that's dissolved in salty water underneath these salt lakes. And in doing so, we extract the lithium straight out of the water. That allows us to leave uh, or return all the rest of that brine, which is about 99% of it, back to its source. And because you only take the lithium out, you actually produce a very high quality product. Elegantly simple, uh, able to operate at room temperature. And the reason that it hasn't been done before is it really wasn't a need to do so. If we go back five years ago, only 10 or 15% of lithium went into batteries. Now that's more than 60% and uh, numbers rising. And the demand with the technology is to get a better quality product. Now let's talk about your project, Steve. Can you tell us more, starting with the catchy lithium brine project? We recently completed a capital raising, a capital raising in January, uh, and that now funds us straight through the next 18 months which is a definitive feasibility study and all the related environmental social studies or what have you, so that we can be in a position for uh, dis construction finance discussions by this time next year. Uh, so that's on the Kachi project. Uh, Oloros and Kalchari, um, we drilled those in 2019 and demonstrated that we had exactly the same brines as our next door neighbours. We're pretty much the only junior adjacent to Oloros that's in production with Orocobre and with Kalchari that's going into production this year with Lithium Americas and Geng Feng, one of the big five. Now to your financials and strategy, can you provide us with a snapshot? First of all, on the corporate side, we've got um, a thousand million shares on issue, a billion shares, that sounds like a lot, uh, a market value of between 300 and 400 million Australian um, between 20 and 25 million uh, in the bank uh, and able to be funded through this next 18 to 24 months. We're targeting 18 months to have everything ready for the construction finance. Um, in that time, you're going to see us announce discussions with downstream partners and also with project financiers. We've been in some uh, initial discussions to source a large portion of the 540 million capex required and uh, we'll have more to say about that soon. So uh, we're actually reasonably well placed and I think um, much better placed soon. And on top of that, we've now uh, got institutional support on our register, both from Australia, the US and the UK EU. Uh, and so our strategy, if we look forward two years time, we'll be in construction uh, on the Kachi project. We'll probably be looking at expanding that from 25 to 50,000 tonnes. And most likely we'll be working with someone else on developing the Kalchari or Ros project. So we could become a major uh, company in this space. And that's because of this ESG and quality benefit. Funds around the world now have put money towards ESG space. There aren't many companies that actually can tick those boxes. We're one of them. So I think you're going to see a significant amount of uplift there as well. Steve Promnitz, thanks so much for the update. Always good to see you. Cheers.